What's up, everybody? Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to pick number 29 of albums that are 30 years old in 2024. We've got 31 days in the month of March here. I picked out, and you picked out, our 31 favorite albums across all genres that are celebrating their 30th birthdays and anniversaries this very year. No real order of mine, just kind of haphazardly throughout the month. This is the 29th day of March. Pick number 29, day 29. <clears throat> this is the second album from this Swedish band released 30 years ago this year for and released privately at the time. Later came out on, I believe, Melatronin, uh, produced by the band and Roger Skog. It is Anglegard Epilogue. Look at that hauntingly eerie, interesting cover art there right is it someone's face is it the woods is it both right a little creek right trees brush right look real close looks like someone's face right absolutely of course the uh, great swedish prog rock band who debuted in the early 90s and kind of took the then not much of a prog rock world by storm one of the bands that helped kind of spearhead this new prog rock movement in the early 90s and of course you know in, in Sweden and Scandinavia, right? Started this whole movement. We now we see all these great bands from Sweden and certainly Norway, right? These days, uh, and after this studio album, they released a live album, Break Up, for many years. We did get a third album from them many, many years later, which is just as great. Will we see a fourth? We hope so, right? That seems to be what we might get. This has the original classic lineup of Matthias Olsen on drums, cymbals, and percussion. Johan Hogberg on bass, Thomas Johnson on Hammond organ, Mellotron, and other various keyboards, Jonas Engegard, however you say that, Engdegard on guitars, Tord Lindman on guitars, and the great Anna Holmgren on flute. Other guest musicians, you've got uh, Asa Eklund uh, on just a little bit of vocalization. It was mostly an instrumental album, though. Martin Olofsson on violin, Karin Hansen on viola, and John C. Norlander on cello. So some classics on here, right? Herky, jerky, complex, pastoral prog, loads of Mellotron, weaving guitars and flutes and keyboards and Hammond and... Like I said, did I mention Mellotron? A lot of Mellotron on this album. Prologue starts it off, right? And then uh, from there, we go to uh, Hostet, otherwise known as Rites of Fall, which is just under 16 minutes long. Terrific song right there. Rostin, otherwise called The Voice. Very quick little piece that leads into Skogsgranden, which is in English is Eaves of the Forest. That's under 11 minutes long. Sista Somrar, The Last Summer, just over 13 minutes long, and then finishing off with a brief little piece called uh, Saknaden's Fullhet, The Fullness of Longing. Uh, again, to, to, it, to explain this music is very, very difficult. You have to hear Anglogard to fully appreciate what they're all about. I'm going to sit here and use words like it's complex, it's gorgeous, big haunting Mellotron, guitars, acoustic and electric weaving in and out, big bass, nimble drums, uh, Hammond organ, blah, 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 blah. You just got to listen to it. This is prog rock. Sure, they borrow some things from classic King Crimson and Genesis and yes and Jethro Tull but they weave it all into this kind of new thing that is Anglogard and its epilogue I would say you need if you're look, looking to explore the music of this band you need all three of their albums because all three of them are basically five out of five star classics and the first album's got some vocals on it in Swedish this album and the third album pretty much all instrumental so it depends on what you like but i would say musically this stuff is off the charts so far ahead of its time and uh, we've seen lots of bands come since trying to do something similar uh, but none of them never quite quite get to the majesty that was anglogard and this their second album could it be their best maybe i'd say any of their three studio albums could potentially be their best album that's just how good they are so of course no uh no charting position or anything like that, no certifications, but if you talk to progressive rock fans of, you know, the last 30, 40, 50 years, most most people who are serious proggers know and love these guys, and uh, 
yeah, it's great. So if you've heard it, let us know what you think in the comments below. If not, please go out and check it out. This is such a great album and a great band. And list your pick down below. And visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as a post. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also down below, we get the links to our Ko-Fi page, our channel donations, our merch page, and our Cameo page. Thank you in advance for all your support there. And we'll see you soon here with more stuff. I am P. Pardo. Tune in tomorrow for more. Martin Popo's coming up in a little bit. Ken Golden's coming up later today. We've also got the review crew tomorrow. We've got ranking the albums on Sunday. Lots happening. We'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.